Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. You're Sambo, and joining us as always is our Worgen Mage, Seraphis. Say hello, Seraphis. Our fates are intertwined. That's right, our fates are intertwined, and welcome to you viewers as well. Back to Darnassus, and of course, if you were watching us in the last episode, you'll remember that we ran around and finally went up north here to the Howling Oak and handed in our Worgen quest and we found our other Gilnean uh, evacuees up the top there under the tree and of course we got a special greeting from Tyrond Whisperwind and of course Malfurion Stormrage from uh, down here normally in the Temple of the Moon they said hello and welcome to our wonderful Darnassian city our Night Elf city uh, uh, but we need help and of course that help is over here on the coast of Kalimdor where you can see we've got a quest to hand in over here where it used to be a little night elf outpost called uh, Orbedine down here which was a, um, somewhere that you'd normally come to and there was a public transport boat port there and everything that's been demolished by Deathwing in the Cataclysm and now we have to go to this place called Lord Danel in order to help out the night elves over there who are being uh, attacked I believe so we've got that to look forward to. What I did promise in an earlier episode is that we'd go for a quick flight out to here in Teldrassil because of course this is where the night elves normally start. I promised you that we'd go for a fly out to the middle, out to Dolinar which is a little city, a little town in the middle of the Teldrassil tree just to give you a taste of what it's like out in the night elf starting zone. So let's do that quickly to kick off the episode. So we go over of course to the public transport Hippogriff Master here. Greetings. And we're going to select Dolina in Teldrassil. Mm -hmm. And that's all you have to do. And now we can, of course, sit back and enjoy the ride and enjoy the view as we fly over the wonderful, beautiful city of Darnassus as we get to see it from the air for once. And there it is. There's the uh, Tradesman's Terrace off there. And now we're going to go through the main gate and we're going to end up out here in actual Teldrassil. So you can see now our, our map has switched and here we go so this is the land where you will normally level up as a young night elf making your way towards Darnassus you actually start off uh, up here in a little beginners village and then you work your way through Dolinar, Dolinar which is where we're going and over to Darnassus so of course this will be very familiar to you if you've ever uh, leveled up a night elf of course <coughs> excuse me and halfway along to the starting zone is Dolinar and here it is. Very familiar for me. I've leveled so many of my tunes through here. Now there never used to be a flight master by the way to get here. Discovered Dolinar. We got 35 XP for that. And if we have a look on our map now you'll see that it's actually uncovered. There it is. And you can see that there's an icon there for the flight master. And we can see we've got ancient protectors wandering around in the background there. We've got wisps. Uh, we've got this little village and this is the first main village that you do reach when you are leveling up. It's the first place you'll find a mailbox and a bunch of uh, major trainers and vendors. Also some of the professions that you can collect are seen for the first time here. In fact there's a nice young, uh, what have we got, a night elf hunter. And in fact that's something we should do is roll a hunter and a druid because of course that there is a druid in cat form really really cool uh, classes to play both hunters and druids <clears throat> hunter of course meaning it's a bit like Pokemon you get your own pet and you get to train them up you get to name them you get to level them up it's very cool as you see the moon well here we'll just take a quick wander out and have a look at the scenery all these night elf structures it's an awesome place to level up if you haven't leveled a night elf tune I highly suggest that you do and here's good old Sentinel Shire. Gosh, you've been kneeling there for about six years, maybe seven years. Now, you must be getting sore knees uh, as we look out over the Teldrassil landscape. So there we are. Just a very quick look at what it's like. You can see it's very peaceful and serene. Of course, that doesn't mean that there's no fights to be had. There's lots, uh, lots of work to be done here if you are, <coughs> excuse me, leveling up. As a night elf, there's your first cooking trainer. In fact, let's just see if they've got any recipes How may I we can learn. <coughs> doesn't look like it no so we have to be level 50 in order to get those and of course our cooking skill isn't quite up there take a quick look inside a typical night elf house out in the wilds here uh, you can see they've got the beds and the uh, chests there 
and uh, very cool scrolls, pillows laying about. I really do like the whole night elf vibe if you hadn't noticed already. Hello Wisp. And of course the moon whale down there. There's another ancient protector doing his part. Protecting the local area from the nasty horde attacks. And of course any other nasties that come our way. We've got a leather armor merchant, weaponsmith. All of these things are really... Uh, welcome when you're leveling up your little tune, which is out over there in the distance, by the way. Like I said, they've got a starting area up here. Anyway, that's it for us. Because it's a free flight, let's it's take a flight back to the city. Go in B. And we'll get to see some more of the wonderful Teldrassil landscape. There's a character down there, a player, questing away, fighting away. Looks so great. I really, 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 really love it. Oh, who's that? Yep, that's Moon Priestess. Where is she? Oh, it was too fast. There's a, uh, a bunch of three priestesses that uh, roam the lands here, roam the paths. They've been doing that for years as well. Um, that there was the leatherworking trainer. If you ever looking for that? Just outside the gates of Darnassus here. As we make our way back to the city, there we go, Darnassus Alliance Territory, of course, it's factional, it's us, not the Horde, and a nice view again from above the city. And flying past the Temple Gardens and back to our Hippogriff area, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. There we go. Now we've got to do this quest where we head away from here, head off this tree, which is here, Teldrassil, and make our way over to the western coast of Kalimdor, over to Darkshore. Very exciting. So let's have a look. What do we have to do? We have to use the teleportation tree, which is right here in western Darnassus, to reach Rutherin village and then speak to Vesperistus to uh, secure a ride over to Lord Danel and of course over to the continent of Kalimdor. Our first big steps out into the real world. Here he goes. I am honoured. I am honoured too. And here we go, we have to fly to Lord Dinell, which fortunately is free. So let's do that right I'm now. Not. Our first big trip over the seas, uh, off the island, out of Gilneas of course, and over to the huge continent of Kalimdor. When I say huge, I mean huge. It's all of these zones here, a lot of which will be familiar to you guys if you've played Moonglade, Winterspring, Mount Hyjal, of course, the very famous barrens, which have now been split into two, northern and southern, because of the um, cataclysm. We've got Duratar, Desolus has changed totally, Stone Talon Mountains, such a big world. And there it is, off in the distance we can see the Teldris tree over there and here is Mist's Edge. Over there was the normal place down south of us of Orbidine. Now instead they've built this outpost here uh, as we approach the coastline. You can see there's some nasties down below um, and this is coming up on Lord and L which is the new outpost and you can see look at that the world has been torn asunder. You've got the water pouring in. The whole continent has been fragmented. It's changed so much. We've got wrecks out there in the background. This of course as we <laughs> whoops, overshoot the jump, whoopsie, we can see there that um, there's wrecks there. This is where we would normally swim about, um, north of Orbidine. And there we can see a level 12 Drenai chamois doing some fishing. Hello, hello, hello. Let's hope we can get back up. Can we get back up? No. Yes, we can. Um, and so we've got a little glimmer of hope here as they've set up this new outpost. We've got some colour. It looks so awesome around here. Let's hop in and uh, hand in our quest, of course, to who? Dentaria Silverglade. Dentaria Silverglade, a priestess of the I moon. Priestess, I, look, we've got a uh, person that's flown in. Priestess, I'm to bring word that there are more survivors incoming. They're doing everything they can to sift through for the ones that are still alive. Please send any help that you can. Understood, Sentinel. Return to the beach and aid them in bringing back any that are still alive. Okay, so we've got some survivors by the sound of things. And she's saying, thank Alun. We can do with all the help we can get. Uh, last wave of survivors, the last of the night elves from Orbidine, which of course is the place I've been talking about, which is the old existing um, outpost over here, down south of us. 
Um, the Night Elves from there have attempted to escape a couple of hours ago. They stayed in their old home, clinging to the hope that it would be salvaged, but it seems that they were finally forced out. I fear many of them won't make it, like Laird did not. Okay, quickly go down to the coast to the west and find any survivors you can. We're sending sentinels on hippogriffs down, but every moment counts. We need to know which ones might make it. So we have to go and lo locate refugees from Orbedeen that are still God alive. So that's very interesting. I like how they're building in the old world into the new world. And you can see on a map here, it's uh, just to the west of us there. So that means we're headed over that way, of course. And isn't this gorgeous? Look at how they've set this up. You can see where the night elves have made their presence here. Uh, it's all nice and flowery and cheerful. And of course, in the background there, you can see it's slightly less so. It's a bit doomy and gloomy. Massive continent, of course, this whole uh, place of Kalimdor. And you can see, we can see off for miles. And it's, yet this is just one little zone. And we can see here, if I just get rid of the quest objectives for a minute so we can make the map bigger, you can see this whole area, this here, by the way, used to have a couple of rivers flowing through it, but nothing like this. We've got this cataclysm-induced event uh, where, uh, where we've got all of these waters pouring in, and we've got a great big whirlpool in the middle there, and we'll definitely go see that. It's an awesome sight to see. Uh, but this is the entire zone of Darkshore now, totally, totally changed if you've uh, only been playing prior to Cataclysm, for example, um, you know, Vanilla or Burning Crusade, or indeed um, the Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, and here's something else that you guys may not have seen if you're new to WoW, your very first gnome. Salutations! Hey! Hmm, interesting. Wink bang. Can I help you? Wink bang crank Please toggle. Was there something else? That's what gnomes look like in the game, of course, folks. And here we've got a few trainers. We've got a mining trainer. Don't think there's anything we can level up here <clears throat> just yet. No, we need to get our mining up to 125. And of course, up here we've got our fine minerals turned on. We're going to find a whole bunch of new types of minerals, I'd imagine, out here. <clears throat> Got to trade supplies. What can I get for you today? What can I get for you today? We got a, a dwarf vendor there. We got a little. Um, is this an inn? Yes, it is an inn. So we're able to log out here and get rest experience. We've got a warrior trainer, uh, a rogue trainer. Love the night elf architecture. As we look out, look at that as the sun sets over the water. So awesome. We've got protectors over there. Uh, I know we've got beds up the top here. I think from memory, we have indeed. So of course we can go to sleep up there. Love it. And uh, yeah, not forgetting this is an inn, so make sure you log out here if you're doing quests over this way. You can see the beach over there, and of course down here we can see, um, oh, look up there, we've got a nice night elf tower. But here we can see, look at the current flowing there. We've got this new devastation here as the waters pour into the inland. Uh, and once again, you can see them uh, on the main map there. Looks like we've got another quest over here to pick up. Always good. You there, we need able bodies as fast as possible. Lives depend on it. Oh, may I help? Ranger, what do we got? Threat from the water. Some of the survivors are still trying to make it from Orbedeen. We have to kill eight vile spray to make sure that they don't well. attack our, uh, our survivors, of course. Yeah. Got a sentinel on a mount there. What do we got? We've got a clothier here. I wonder what she sells. She can repair. Can That's very handy. And she sells some common clothes. Looks like we've already managed to buy ourselves most of them. Now we've got an archaeology trainer here, and look, we've got a little female gnome. Can I help you? Pleased to meet you. They're cute little Hi, how are you? squeaky voices. Archaeology, of course, we can't actually grab that until we're level 20. So we've got a wee way to go, given that we're level 14. And of course, the moon well with a priest trainer um, sitting next to it. I love the night elf stuff. Ishnu Daldieb to you as well. You know what, I'm of two minds, folks. Maybe you can um, help me with this, by the way, as we head off out to our questing to the uh, west. I've got half a mind to actually start up a Night Elf myself so that we can actually quest through the Night Elf starting zone and end up here as a Night Elf like we're supposed to be, of course, what it was designed for originally, um, rather than as a Worgen. What do you think? I'm not sure. What's this, a Shimmering Snail? That's a new type of mob. Let's love that just in case... It's something that we need to, or of course we can kill it, in case it's a pest, who knows. And here we go, a vile terror, these are the things that we have to uh, count off for our quest, of course. It's been a while since we've been in combat, 
getting back into it, getting used to it again. Uh, casting the frost, frost bolt, of course, to slow them down. And then a fireball, which is pure DPS. And you can see this is actually quite a high level epic mob. It's level 15 to 2624 hit points. It's a whole bunch. And look at that, it actually spawned a whole bunch of little ones. We're going to frost them over them in place so they can't uh, chase us. I don't have a time. Fortunately, they do not have much health, uh, so they didn't last too long. Otherwise, we would have got mobbed by them. Good lord. And what do we got here? We've got our one of eight vile uh, sea sprays slain. So it looks like they're going to just wave in. And of course, we also have to try and find our survivors. So let's go along here. Now, these tide crawlers, we probably want to kill them as well because hopefully they'll actually give us I crab need to target meat. Something first. Whoops, for some reason we lost our target there, not sure why. Um, yeah, we want crab meat for our cooking. Let's frost over that in place. We'll send over some uh, arcane missiles. And there we go, we'll knock the next one out as well. And of course, clear casting that all too familiar sound gives us basically a free shot, gives our next spell a 100% chance to be 100% less mana. And you can see here, there we go, Crawler Claws. Gosh, that's hard to say. Uh, that's what we want. There are trade goods, their meat there for cooking. Now, I'm not sure that we've actually got any recipes. No, we haven't that contain them yet. Maybe a cooking trainer around here will actually give us them. Now, I'm not sure if the snails give us any meat. Let's try them. Using the frost bolt, of course, to snare our snail and make sure he can't move too fast. No, no meat over that. Let's go to the corrupted tide craw there. Cast that off. We're going to worry too much about being beaten up by these guys because they don't hurt too much. But we do want the meat. Oh, look at that. We actually got crawler meat off from that time. And that's yet another uh, recipe for, uh, another regent rather, for cooking as we attack this vile terror. Um, trade goods meat used for cooking. Once again we'll have a look at our recipes. No, we don't have any that use it yet, but of course we will in the future. Trying to mow down this um, huge mob here, this vile terror, which is an epic level 15, 2,000, 2,500 skill points basically. So doing all we can to DPS this down. 842 hit points, it's nearly there. Helping the Sentinels, and of course, part of our quest line. And there we go, and we've got these vile sea sprays that have spawned again. So we want to take care of them as we frost and over them in place so that they can't attack us. And there we go, all done. Got ourselves some trash loot there. Right, so let's continue attacking these crawlers on our way westwards because we want the meat. And a lovely sound of the clear cast there, jolly good. And look at that as the sun is setting in the background, casting its reflection across the water. So pretty as we walk along the beach here. Frostbolt over there to slow them down, followed up by a nice big fireball. Look at that, we're actually nearly level 15. And that's going to be very exciting because level I 15... Need a oh, there we go! Speaking of level 15, we've reached level 15. We have a new talent point available, it says there, and we have a new feature unlocked. As you can see, come up on the screen there, the Dungeon Finder. Now, that's a huge big event in terms of your WoW career. And we'll take a quick moment to go through that and explain that. Uh, let's turn around. Um, so yes, let's firstly have a look at our talent points. So we've got ourselves a new talent point and of course the new changes in WoW mean we have to go down the arcane tree. We can't uh, diversify over to the side until we've got to the bottom of the arcane tree. So we've got a choice here. We can either increase our spell haste, which basically makes us cast faster, or we can improve our counter spell, which also silences the enemy as well as just um, interrupting them. I think what we're going to do is increase our haste because haste is good. So I'm going to add a point in there and learn that. Are you sure you want to learn this talent? 
yes I am and there we go and the other big thing of course as the vile terror is in the background in fact let's go and kill that while it's up because they don't seem to come up very often and you can see as I hover over it there um, it's oh no wait a minute it's a vile spray we need oh yeah vile spray two of eight so I'm not sure if this one will count or not soon find out no it didn't maybe it's because I didn't get to it in time or maybe because it's the wrong type of mob, who knows. And got ourselves some loot there from that little spawned vile spray, that's good. Um, so yes, as we have a look at this new feature, we've got the eye down there at the bottom, and it's literally the eye uh, key on your keyboard. It's the Dungeon Finder, a tool to help you find a group to join or additional players to complete your newly ex uh, created or existing group. So this is a big, big, big thing. So let's bring that up. What is it? Okay, it's a new, relatively new tool, by the way, um, which allows us to get into a queue for a dungeon, because of course dungeon running is quite a big part of WoW, WoW just as it is any uh, part of any major uh, MMO. And uh, what this tool does is it means that you don't actually have to physically run to the entrance of a dungeon. So that's a big, 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 huge time-saving thing. Now, of course, for all of the, those of you who complain and say, oh, it's not fair, you know, in the old days we used to have to run there and now you can just get teleported straight there. Well, you know what? You can still run to the start of a dungeon if you know where its location is and port yourself in or you in your group. If you want to do that manually, it's no problem. They haven't taken away that feature, okay? So quit your complaining. If you want to be um, a role player or you like to run around the world and make an effort to get to the dungeons with you and your party or your guild or your friends or whatever it might be, you can still do that. You don't have to use this dungeon finder, okay? But... For a lot of people, it means it's a lot easier because what it does is for a start, you tell it what is your class. So here we've got choices and, and I'll read them out. It indicates that you're willing to protect allies from harm by ensuring that enemies are attacking you instead of them. So that's the tank role. Now we can't play that role because of course we're a squishy mage. The next one is a healer role. Indicates that you're willing to heal your allies when they take damage. We of course can't do that either because we're a mage. We don't heal other players. But this one, DPS indicates that you're willing to take on the role of dealing damage to enemies. So we tick that there. And of course, if you're playing a hybrid class, you may be able to do uh, two of these, or in fact, all three, and you can choose what sort of role you want to play in. This last one here is the group leader one. It indicates that you have some dungeon experience and are comfortable instructing the group in how to overcome encounters, which we are. I've run hundreds, if not thousands, of these runs throughout my WoW career, so I'm certainly comfortable in leading a group. Then what it does is it lists... A, um, a list of all the dungeons that are available to us at this level. So as you can see here, when you turn 15, there are three classic dungeons that are available. One's called the Dead Mines, one's called Rage Fire Chasm, and the other is called Wailing Caverns. And you can see that they're color coded there as to how difficult they are. So the Dead Mines is ranged from level 15 to 21, as is Rage Fire Chasm. Um, so they're um, of a moderate difficulty. Wailing Caverns is ranged from 15 through to level 25. So it's actually quite challenging as a level 15 player. Now what you can do, um, in the random dungeon finder is a couple of things. If you know that you want to run the dead mines, you sim simply hit the uh, tick check box there next to the dead mines, or of course you can do two of them or three of them or any combination thereof, and you'd go click find group. Now we won't do that right now, but what that would do is that that would put us in a queue for the dead mines. Now an important thing to note here, by the way, and by the way, let's get her dancing while we're talking about this. Something interesting. Where you go. There we go. Okay, these here put us in a queue. If we find group, it will actually put us in a queue for the dungeons. Now, the good thing about the dungeon finder is that it actually puts us in a cross-server queue. That's right. It's not just a queue of the characters and other players from this particular realm here. It actually puts us in a battle group queue. So there's probably about, well, look, actually, I don't know how many there are, maybe 15 or 20 different servers um, that all get queued in the same battle group and that means that the chances of us getting a group are of course a lot higher because it's not just looking for players who are in a queue um, from this server. So it will go out and it will attempt to form a party with a tank, a healer and of course three DPS character players because parties in WoW for doing five man runs are, as you might expect, five men big or five women big, five players big. 
That's if you want to specifically do a run. However, you'll notice this drop down menu here and you can choose from specific dungeons or a random classic dungeon. And this is what most people use. You click on that and as it says, if you actually use the random dungeon finder to do a random dungeon, you will earn extra rewards. So a big point of difference here. If you specifically want to go to Rage Fire Chasm, you can be put in the queue for that. And yes, you'll go there straight there and you'll do it. It'll teleport you there and it will teleport you straight back to where we are here, uh, which is very handy without you having to run all the way. However, if we choose a random dungeon, and by the way, you can hover over this dice here, and it will tell you what the pool is. So the following dungeons are included in your level range when queuing for a random dungeon. You can see there it's listing Rage Fire Chasm and Dead Mines. It's not listing the other one there, which you might remember was Wailing Caverns, because it's actually quite a higher level. So for a random dungeon, it's going to have those two to choose from. And if we queue ourselves there, it'll just go, you'll see a little icon on your minimap, and again, we'll probably do it in the next episode, um, where it's queuing us there, cross server, for one of those two runs. And if we, and, and like I said, you don't guarantee which one you're going to get into. And later on, this list gets a lot bigger, so you may be randoming for up to maybe, you know, five or even ten various dungeons. It's totally random as to which one you get entered into. But what happens is uh, you get this, a satchel of helpful goods, which is a blue satchel. Okay, so you get a blue item out of it. And that's, of course, huge when you're leveling up like us because we don't, I think... We've got one blue item there only, the rest are whites and greens. So, of course, the more we run dungeons, the more... Oh, hello. We've got some splashback from that fight that's going on over there. Let's just get rid of them. Go. Um, yeah, what happens is you get a blue each time you run it as a random, as a reward, and of course, that's fantastic because you don't get much blues at this level by normal means. There is a limit though, you may receive this raw reward seven more times this week. Okay, now that's only new as well because what people were doing is just endlessly running dungeons and nothing else because of course it's a great way of getting XP, leveling up and getting gear. So what they've done is they've put a limit on that so that you basically can only do one a day per week of randoms. Now that doesn't mean you can't um, queue for a specific dungeon run, you can do that as many times as you like, but in terms of getting this satchel of helpful goods and this extra money and this extra XP, you can only do it seven times per week. So, yes, that's an explanation of that new feature that's just opened up the Dungeon Finder for us. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you, by the way, before we uh, finish up this episode, uh, and that is our new ability, of course, which is Polymorph, and I haven't had a chance to show that to you. So if we take an enemy, and this, take, we'll, this case will just take the corrupted Tidecrawler there, and of course it's not posing us any threat at all because it's non-aggro towards us, but I want to show you what the sheep does. Now, if you remember, I explained it in a previous episode, it turns an enemy into a sheep that can't attack but heals quickly, i.e. any heals cast upon it will um, be very effective best used to keep a second enemy busy while finishing off the first one and of course you can only uh, target or polymorph one target at a time and it has a time limit on as well so at the end of the day it's a crowd control mechanism so very funny though let's see what happens when we cast it on this corrupted tide crawler now I'm not sure if you he heard that or not but it went meh because there we go it's now uh, turned into a sheep and it has been crowd controlled. In fact, if we look at its portrait, we can see a buff on it there. It's been polymorphed and it's got 34 seconds remaining. So, of course, it's great at tying people up. Now, if we attack it, it will break that CC, that crowd control. Let's do that. There we go. You can see that it's turned back into the corrupted tide crawler and it immediately aggroes onto us, by the way, because we are the ones that put the polymorph on it. So let's go up close. Oh, look at that. You can see the sun. And I think it's a little bit of rain. Is that rain appearing? It might start raining, actually, in the game. Um, what have we got out there? Oh, we've got a vile spray out there. Actually, these are the ones that we need to kill. Um, they're the, the ones that are our level. They're underwater. Let's go and check them out. Yeah, there we go. Now let's polymorph one of these. So you can see it's attacking us at the moment. If I do the polymorph oh there we go no oh maybe it won't let us do it underwater not sure or maybe because it's in combat no it's not because it's in combat oh and it's put a nasty ability on us there yikes i 
love the water effects in this game ever since they updated them they're fantastic um, let's go up close and hear what the um, polymorph spell does there you go you can hear it quite clearly that time it's very funny and um, a lot of other games in fact rift has completely ripped it off and their polymorph spell also uh, cheaps a um, another I mob not sure how they're quite able to get away with that but anyway uh, now the other major thing of course is that you can use it on enemy players so if you're pvping uh, sheeping a player is something that you'll want to be doing because it works on uh, basically um, most creatures there are some enemy types that it doesn't work on but uh, the vast majority of them it will and look at this we've got a survivor here a named survivor Volcor's body remains motionless as you begin to move away. A hand reaches out and grabs your ankle. He's alive. Volcor, I'm gl so glad to see you. You made it. Uh, but where is Grimclaw? We'll worry about him later. I need to get you to safety. And again, thank you for your help, friend. I'll take it from here, says the Sentinel. So um, we're looking for all of these people, by the way, in the quest. We can see we've got Volcor rescued. We've got Sheldon rescued. Uh, Gishala Night Whisper and Cerulean White Claw. There's a whole bunch of people. If you have played WoW before, by the way, you will um, be chuckling away as you read out those names because, of course, they'll be very familiar to you as um, NPCs that used to be dotted around this zone of Darkshore. Uh, and now here they are washed up. Here comes, by the way, a Worgen Druid. Worgens have an awesome cat form, as you can see there and obviously uh, he or she is doing the same quest as us so to wrap up this episode perhaps let's uh, kill off the rest of these what do we got uh, six of eight vile sprays let's take out the last two of them to finish off our quest as we swim and of course keeping an eye on our breath meter uh, that particular breath meter is part of the quartz add-on part of my cast bar add-on such a great uh, tool by the way if you don't have it already I highly suggest you go get it off curse you can find the links to it uh, in one of my earlier let's play episodes all right there we go eight of eight vile spray are slain so you can see we've got a hand in there uh, and we've got some more rescuers to uh, more survivors rather to rescue so perhaps I'm just wondering if we do them now hmm because next episode I definitely want to take us for a run in a dungeon it's a big event in WoW uh, in your WoW career let's see if we can find what we got over here looks like we've got a copper vein that's very good oh and here's Delmond looks like I wonder if it's Delmond that we have to rescue no, it's not. Not one of them. So sad. All the survivors from... Um... Oh, Grondel Moonbreeze. Gosh, all these NPCs. Oh, no, he's dead. All these NPCs from Orbidine and from the surrounding area of Orbidine. You know, it's so sad. It really is. Oh dear. Who's this? Gwyneth Bly Legond. You may well remember her from Orbidine as well if you've played in the past. The Night Elf turns to you as you approach and reaches for your hand. It's too late for me. We earned our fate with our pride. Go. Others may have made it. Save any that you can. Her grip loosens as life slips from her. Very sad. I remember interacting a lot with her. Tarenthus, another named player, uh, another named um, NPC. Oh dear, dead as well. Gosh, where are the named ones that we need? There's another player, level 80 dwarf hunter, on their dragon mount. Very cool. Right, where is the quest sending us to? Let's have a look. Should be around here. Cerulean White Claw rescued. Hmm. Ah, Sheldon. That's who we wanted. Washed up on this rock that we can't jump up on. Come on. There we go. And here we go. Sheldon, the Sentinel. I will see to it that Sheldon is returned to safety. Thank you, hero. There we go. <clears throat> Alright, let's have a look at the next one. Is over there. 
somewhere. We're looking for Cerulean White Claw. Hmm, I wonder where he will be. Ah, there we go. Looks like he actually might be alive, maybe. As you approach, you hear Cerulean gasp for breath. He, he looks to stand a chance of rescued soon. Cerulean, you made it. I'll help get him back to Lord Donnell. Thank you for your help. Hopefully, uh, with some phasing, of course, what this means is that we will actually see these um, NPCs and be able to interact with them once more in our outpost. And we're now looking for Gishala Night Whisper. Lucky last. And that looks like it's him out there on the rock. And yes, luckily for us. There we go. Rolls onto his side to look at you as you approach and you see a hopeful smile creep onto his face. Dentaria will be so happy to see you alive. There we go as we look out over the waters of Darkshore. And there we go. We can now return... Hand in our quests. We've got a couple of quests to hand in. Let's race back there to finish off this episode that we're way over time for. Sorry about that, folks. Dark flight. Off we go. And it certainly looks like it's going to rain here pretty soon. Um, the weather effects in WoW are fantastic too. You obviously get rain, you get windstorms, you get snow depending on the zone you're in. You get thunder and lightning. Um, you get nice, bright, breezy, sunny days, overcast days. It's just really fantastic. It's such a livable, fun world to roam around in. Really feel like you're here. It's great. There's a vile terror. Shall we help them kill it? Yeah, why not? Looks like Cozine there is doing it for a quest. Help out our fellow Worgen. And there we go. And actually we get the uh, loot from it, but that also means we get the aggro, so we get the frosting over there. I don't have a target. Whoops, looks like we aggroed a snail as well. That's no problem. Alright, so let's head back to our newly formed outpost. Look how beautiful it is. We see the waters raging off in the background there into the heartland of this zone that's been torn apart by the cataclysm. I am honored. Here we go. Your efforts are much appreciated since the cataclysm. We've had little hope of taking back Orbidine without extinguishing Be the careful. presence of those uh, elementals that we just killed, of course. Now we're going to try and find ourselves some repairs. I know there's one around here somewhere. Here we go. Armor, armor, and shield. <coughs> excuse me, shieldsmith. Do some repairs. Sell off all our junk, of course, for a nice healthy profit. Uh, looks like we got ourselves a beaded cloak. We'll sell that. It's no use to us. Uh, got a war-torn cape. No, we have one that's better that we're <coughs> already wearing. And let's do our final hand in before wrapping up the episode. Over here at Dentaria Silverglade. Elune be with you. There we go. Thank you. Some of them surely wouldn't have made it without you. We'll be taking the wounded to the main building once we have them all safely back in town. Perhaps you can meet us there Elune later. What brings you here? The Boon of the Seas. Uh, basically, we, now we'll stop reading all of the uh, quest text unless it's super important. Basically, they want us to collect 16 encrusted clam mussels now. Asha Thala. Asha to you as well. And I can see there's a quest over here. That we'll go pick up before we log out at the end. Get Gavin or get going. Okay, he wants us to use our fishing skill to obtain four dark short gropers. And we'll get ourselves a fishing pole there. Um, unfortunately, it's one that's lesser than we've got because, of course, Farewell. you may remember we did get one with extra stats on it. Very nice. But we'll still do the quest for XP, of course. And you can start to get an idea of the landscape. Hopefully you can see that on the YouTube video over there. It's a nice tree 
uh, very well dark treed area and you can see that some of it in, in fact is on flame it's on fire in the flames rather over in the background there as a result of Deathwing and the Cataclysm being up to no good you can see we've got one more quest from a gnome up here there we go whiz bang crank Greetings. toggle Greetings to you! Gather four corrupted tide crawler flesh samples and bring them to Buzzbox413. And of course, this is a throwback to the quests that used to be in Darkshore. You may well remember the Buzzbox quests, um, and you'll be able to see them, of course, now if you haven't before. So we need four corrupted tide you. crawler flesh. And we have some crawler meat, but because we weren't on the quest, it wasn't dropping that particular quest item. And of course, we'll get them when we go out hunting later. Let's love the webbit. Whoops. There we go, just in case it's in our achievements. And you can see now, folks, it has started raining. You can hear it raining. Uh, you could see it on the water before. But now, hopefully on the YouTube video, you can see it uh, up against that grey background there. You can see it splashing on the water. In fact, you can see the drops making ripples on the water, and they make little splashes as well. And you can see it on the ground, hopefully. You can see that. It's so much attention to detail. It's just fantastic. There you go. You might be able to get a better view of the rain. You can probably hear it there. So definitely time to go inside so we don't get soaked. And you can see, you should be able to probably hear the rain disappearing on oh, no, it still yep it stops inside the uh, inn of course but uh, you can still hear it outside so let's have a look at our quest map you can see we've got uh, to do next time we've got uh, corrupted tide crawler flesh to pick up for the gnome we've got some encrusted clam mussels and we've got some dark shore gropers to get but of course what we will try and do is queue ourselves in our recently discovered um, dungeon finder see if we can do a, do a run see how badly we do at running a dungeon I'm sure we'll be fine at such a low level of course it does depend on the rest of the party but that's all in store for the upcoming episode so thank you very much for watching this one sorry we went a bit over time certainly hope you'll join us in the next episode on behalf of myself uh, Sambo and Seraphis of course our Worgen mage who sang bye never forget Never, never forget surrender. and never surrender. There we go. It's us saying, hope you're having a great day. Take care. We'll see you later and bye-bye.